Francis. Thank you to the Cité de l'Architecture. Um, I'm sorry that my school French uh, will, won't suffice this evening, so I'm going to um, present to you in English, and um, I'd like to say thank you all for coming. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to show one project, one building, um, and it's located on the west coast of Ireland in a small, a very small city called Galway, a town really. And uh, uh, but it's a funny little place in that it has, um, it's on the sea, it has medieval roots and lots of fragments of bits and pieces from the 15th century outwards, really. And uh, it. Uh, it uh, has a very convivial culture, a very lively, a very lively small town atmosphere. It's bilingual, it's Eng English and Irish. It's a fantastic music tradition. And perhaps strangely, it has a very, very strong culture of film, um, which, uh, which um, comes to a crescendo every year in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a festival, but this has gone back to the to, to the early se early seventies, and the sort of history of this project is that a group of um, people who are interested in film um, came together and formed a body called Solus uh, and applied for European funding that was available at the time to. Um, to make art house cinemas, to make cinemas that would show films that weren't made in America, basically. It was about, it was about supporting and developing indigenous European film. And, um, uh, and Galway as a city, though lively and full of artistic um, endeavor, has very little infrastructure. So as a, in a bid to win European capital of culture, which they did for 2020, the idea was to make a cinema, an art house cinema, in the city centre, not on the outskirts, not in a black box, but to make a public house of film with a bar and a restaurant, um, good rooms for looking at pictures um, um, as close to possible to the heart of the city. Um, the client called the project the Picture Palace, um, which immediately evokes rather nostalgic images, perhaps, of theatres that, at the, in the early days of cinema, when theatres were used for projection, and this kind of idea of of a kind of a, a kind of a, a frugal glamour, the decorated shed, um, and the idea of curtains. So, as to celebrate the um, opening of the cinema just earlier this year it was a long project. It took a long time through recessions and, and uh, uh, to actually complete it. Uh, the, the, the second client, Element Pictures, commissioned a short film from Peter Mabry on the making of the curtains, which, uh, which we'll just, if you don't mind, show you now, um, um, Stefan. Uh-huh. 
Okay. Начало уже в другую сторону. Угу. А як? Так вшеска, то вшеска, не? Так. А можна ти його дивитися? Вона там та й на столі, то ще буде впадала вже там на столі. Ага. Я життя. Okay, so here we are <clears throat> in the cinema, and uh, there's a big window, 
There's a big window that's actually made out of plastic, which bounces the light back, projects from behind. And then the window has curtains, and um, these curtains wrap all the way around. Uh, this is the top cinema. So we are in a, we are uh, uh, behind the curtains is just tissue paper um, for acoustic uh, management. And then outside of that, again, there's um, another kind of plastic, which is a, a, a thermal insulation. And then outside that, again, there's a, the, sh the shell, which is in situ concrete. So the game between all the rooms is which ones need to be totally tempered, such as the cinema, black box, artificial light, artificial air, artificial images, um, and varying degrees of enclosure and tempering, say for the bar, which is naturally ventilated, but artificially lit, for instance. And then maybe what is artificial light becomes a question when you start to gel the windows. And you go down to the circulation areas, which need to be only covered and maybe dry and not insulated to points in the program where actually they're outside. Um, so the top cinema is lined all around in red velvet, or in, yeah, with a velveteen. And um, this is the plan of it. Um, so we have a, the, the well-tempered room caught in the interstices of the structure. Um, uh, and then hung from the roof, it's just a theatrical lighting rig. So the rooms then drape down the section. The rest of it is lino and painted black. To the room below, which is stacked on top of it, the rakes superimpose on one another, implicating themselves in the cross section. This room then is again draped, but in a slightly different way. It's done more like a skirts, a series of skirts. Uh, and it becomes this much more of a kind of a deco feel, whereas the one up above has a small stage, maybe for live events or interviews. And it, it's more like, a, I suppose, it's, uh, what could be thought of as a theater. And then the one, the cinema below is draped like a marquee, like a tent. And uh, so it happens. So all, each, all of these rooms are thought of as inside. And then, so the moment of entry into the cinema the, the, acoustic, the closing of the acoustic, acoustic lobby, the total sealing of the space, the adjustment of your eyes into the dark, the, 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 you take off your coat at that point, uh, the temperature is regulated, an oblong of light comes across uh, through the dark and the picture opens and then the reverse happens. So the calibration of the project is to into this space and then out of it again and in, in this space day becomes night, night becomes day and so on. So you can see the three cinemas here um, Cin bottom cinema, the biggest one is below ground the middle one, the little deco one that I showed you and then the top one with the stage and then here is the circulation. This is not tempered, this is raw, raw space. All of this here, the projection is untempered as well. The bar is tempered but naturally ventilated and naturally lit and so is this restaurant here on the ground floor. This is the foyer which is outside. This is the box office here. This is comms um, communications. This is an office for the, for the workers of the cinema. And this is another escape staircase here. So as you can see, there's degrees of enclosure between outside, outside, inside, and genuinely inside here. And the interstices are exploited in the linings. This is Merchants Road. Down here are basically the toilets, so there's a chimney of services here. So the plan <clears throat> and the section relate to uh, the diagram of an Irish tower house where you have a servant and served relationship, can actually, drew Scottish ones, where you put the best room in the centre and then you pack all, this, all, this, all, the, all the services 
to the walls. We have mural staircases, lobbies, passive solar chimney here, staircases here, projection lift and so on. So you have a good room in the middle and then the extrusion of the structure takes up the extent of the plot available and then in between is packed all the small spaces. And so the circulation becomes coagulated into these kind of necklace of small interrelated spaces that are quite complex, which are, which are, which are inherited from the plot um, um, and pressed as poche from outside and inside by maintaining the maximum number of seats in the cinema. So this is the solar chim... I'll just go... That, this, just so... That is this. This is a full-height passive solar vent which naturally ventilates the bar below and actually allows the, the sound lobbies, one here, there's another one here, but this one here to look back down into the bar as you leave. So normally in this cinema you would come up here watch and come out here. So there are two staircases, one on this side, one on this side. This one's noisy and clangy and kind of like a uh, fire escape in a, in a film and this one is much more of a landscape um, event. So that's it on site, that's it finished now. So you just get this dream, this kind of, uh, this sort of space into which and from which one can look. Um, so there are the lobbies there, that's, this is out, actually outside here. So that's, in there is thermally and acoustically sealed. Out here is noisy, and out there is outside. And then, of course, the windows the, the windows are adjusted. We thought about the windows as um, projectors as well, so they're all coloured, or the majority of them are. So they project into the spaces, and then at night they project out, and they start to um, decorate, if you like, um, the walls. There's a working drawing of the same thing. And here you can see the, the, the declension, if you like, of, of the structure, the management between or, or, of insulations and then the finish here. So in a way, the, it's thought of that these, the, the, the warranty or the design life of this surface is you know, relatively short, whereas this one is very, very long. The building is a monolith, a nine-storey um, cast in situ building, which is shot blasted concrete. So inside and outside, are interrogated across the, across the project for reasons of economy, but also for just the, for actually reasons of pleasure. Um, the idea that the interior of the building could be a, um, a suite of microclimates rather than homogenous is actually, I think, very pleasurable um, for the skin and uh, and and atmospherically as well. Um, it, and it means, of course, that one can therefore have the inside and the outside if one that's the inside if that's the inside and if that's the outside that they can relate to one another here you can see that where the staircase becomes a transfer beam and takes the facade off that's the foyer that's actually the entrance staircase and this is a window which spans between them um, yeah so going moving down the plan this is the middle the middle cinema which you saw and again, you can see the, the cascading of the staircases, the program running down and this other staircase happening below it. And again, there's your chimney. So the stairs then become um, exercises in the picturesque, if you like, and they try to make the most of what they have to do. This one is basically a roiling metal stairs in a large volume, in a large concrete volume. So it becomes like this, and then, of course, the services all become exposed because there's no insulation, there's no temp tempering at all within this space. So uh, uh, it becomes a very direct relationship between the, the lit space, the, stair the staircases, the windows, the, the window as screen, the screen again here, this electronic, the, the neon sign here, and these windows are all, in, in this case, are all done in blues and greens, so that this has a slightly kind of gloomy atmosphere, or almost mossy. And the ceiling, all the plasterboard, where I've tried to minimise it, but there is some in it, is painted black. And so is all the, all the, all the metalwork indoors. 
So you can see there's the entrance door to the top cinema. And there's that staircase coming to land, just the entrance to the projection door, and come back around and become a kind of an alley. So there's a kind of a sense that the, that the spaces, the interstitial spaces, the spaces of circulation behind become more urban by, being, by virtue of being quasi-outside or indeed fully outside, that they, are, they, they become more like lanes and more like, more like an extension of the gnarly medieval town that, that remains of Galway. So, and again, you start to see then that the pictures back project into the space and and actually complicate your views out back into the town. So this is the plan of the bar, which is uh, in in Galway. In a lot, a lot of Irish, the Irish bar is not like, for instance, um, a gin palace or something. An Irish bar generally is a is an accretion of domestic spaces, conversions, and complicated and. It relies on snugs and a kind of a necklace of small spaces for intimacy and conviviality. So the consequences of the roiling of the plan and the, and the rooms above results in this kind of suite of a snug and a back snug and a void down to below and, these small, and another view down here. So this is a bridge and back here to a place to smoke and back down the stairs outside. This is all outside. This is semi-outside and so on. So it becomes a space where one can actually kind of move around and, and be caught in reflections and mirrors and, and a very, very social space, a place made for a crowd. So that's that back stairs, which is coming down into the town where you would be, top of which you would find smokers and, and way into the, top, to the two top cinemas. So you can see here that that's actually inside and that's outside. And well, this is, rain comes in here and that's looking at it from the other end. So you're looking back down out under an archway, which I'll show you later, and into the town. So the ground floor is treated in limestone pavement, part of the town. And as I was saying, that uh, this is all in situ concrete from a local quarry. It's all effectively limestone as well. Um, detailing of the management, I suppose, of the treatment of the concrete as a landscape and as handrails which are detailed off a Georgian handrail they're detailed as outside handrails they've just got a small semi a flat round on the top of them and back down you're looking into the bar the void back through and up into the bar the the the, the colors on the bar then start to drive through the cross section the whole focus of the project is south facing so it tries to catch as much precious south light and Galway is a very grey town a lot of weather a lot of grey or sorry a lot of rain so it's very very hungry this building to pull the light as deep across the section as it possibly can looking down from the bar so you can see people going to the cinema which is down to the left that would be down to the main cinema here looking up from that space so you that's the bar and that's the bar and that's the bar with this. So these big walls, so that's insulated and plastered and that's outside and uninsulated. And then this wall is cantilevering the whole thing off itself here and here, these two big beams and a big beam there. And up there is that chimney I, I keep orienting, orienting you back to, through, looking through that. So again, it's about just making the thing as complicated or as complicated, yeah. To be honest, yeah, as complicated as possible, but I suppose it's more appropriate, it's more, um, you're not supposed to say complicated, are you? You're supposed to say complex, but as complex as possible. But I like complicated. So it's a traditional bar. It's, it's got a sapile floor, um, which is, um, which is um, ebonized, traditional joinery. Effectively, it's got bespoke lights, traditional furniture. It just happens that what it does spatially is not traditional. And then you can see where it borrows the light from the party wall on the back, and this is where the fresh air comes in and goes back up that chimney. There's a bar, there's that void, there's that chimney. So there's an unfolded elevation of the room. So you can see it's a black architecture. Like there's a sub-architecture within the room of 
black wood, black stained wood, and um, and it has its own order that becomes the bar, the floor becomes the bar, becomes the snug, becomes the lining, becomes these doors, and these doors sometimes have mirrors, sometimes have windows in them, depending, and they all have these kind of vision panels which go right through. So the colour of the room is because of these yellow, yellow, orange, red dots is amber, so like a traffic light, it's like a warm room, which is traditional in Irish bars that, that you would have amber glass, so it would make a kind of perpetual afternoon of the room. And then running men become funny. That's the, that's, that's the, out, that's the inside of that, which is the outside. So in cross-section, then you start to see the staircase, how these things work. This one squeezes into this space here to let you up into the cinema behind. And there's the big cinema below, and here's the street. And you can see that this is the, the building is actually on a plinth, a 1.2 meter high plinth with a ramp down the front. This is because the sea is just out here. And this is uh, maximum, this is the, for, for flood protection. So the windows then are all treated with a resin that developed with a, and uh, it was the last work of the great Irish um, um, painter and graphic artist and architect actually, um, um, Patrick Scott, and they are kind of like boiled sweets. They're all t all the windows bar one are um, are are filled with colour. There there's resin put on the put on the. In, in between the double glazed unit or sometimes the double glazed unit is opened up and there's two layers put in so that optically the thing starts to expand again and as I was saying it colours the rooms and at night time pushes back out into the city. So you can see in this monochrome world that this window here is the one that brings you up the stairs. And then as you turn on the stairs this window starts to speak and then, and then so on. And then obviously then in, the outs, in these outside spaces, which as I say are, right now would be cold, um, all the markings are done as, as they would be on a street. They're just very direct painted. So, so that the, it means that each space then, the, uh, the, the bar, the cafe, and the, essentially the, 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 the cinemas, and then all the outdoor spaces have their own character, have their own language, and have their own detailing. As you can see, the window is over-detailed here to fit into this, the detailing of the handrail here, the detail of shifts when you go into each space. So again, that there's a charge of atmosphere through the detailing and the lighting whenever you enter into the room, so that perhaps like how scenes can change in a movie that you can actually very do very in the swing of a doorway change the atmosphere and change the detailing and change the acoustic and the temperature um, um, in the architecture of the building. So that's as you turn that turn you turn again here and you can see the, the, the this this staircase is is filled with red essentially red windows. And you can see the void up there, and you're going back up to cinema number three. And that's where that staircase has cantilevered over, I pointed out before. And so all of these, all of these stairs are holding up these walls as they shift in transfer slabs right up through the building. So this is the ground floor plan. That's that staircase you were looking at there. This is the restaurant. This is the kitchen. This is the stairs down into the into the big cinema. There's now a garden in development here. This is the street, a ramp, a stairs, the foyer, a box office, and the stairs up and back into the old town. This facade is a facsimile. Oops, this is just a working door. I suppose the, there's, an, there's an intention throughout the project to try and make as much of the project as we could that... that mm, that we could invent, like the light fittings, the graphics, the, the wayfinding, the steelwork, the curtains, the 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 um, the windows, and so on. And we would try not to buy anything um, that we could that we could that we could possibly even just adjust rather than an event. So this is the light fitting for the, which is for the. This light fitting here, which uh, carries the 
carries carries this sm small tea room or restaurant. I should say there's only two orders in the building really. There's this street and there's this street. So these walls work off this one and these ones work off this street. So the building sort of sachets across the site, generating the space, which is effectively turning space in, in what is effectively a domestic scale building, in a, very big, a very big house. So um, dining room, elevation of the dining room as an extension of the front facade, kind of a, a hall of mirrors. Just the detailing of that is different. It, it is all heavily chamfered on the ground floor and then the chamfers drop away as you go up, pardon me, through the building. And then these screen, it becomes a shop, uh, sorry, a shop front really, and these screens open and you can see then the context within which this building lives. Um, this is a museum, a city museum here. This is the main kind of, this is Shop Street. This is the main, the main, this is the Ramblas of Galway. It's down here. And then just, um, it's a pleasure in making very simple, exaggerated gutters, galvanized steel gutters, and um, enjoying the chamfering of the concrete and the drips and, and the whole kind of architecture of wet just going down to the main cinema so you can see here this is where it goes underground so it's it's so it's 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 got it's managed on the back of this with with a with with um it's managed on the back of this because, you know, for, for water. But here it's all exposed and then the stone falls through it. So, it. so each of these linings then becomes exaggerated and becomes something that you attach a handrail to and suddenly the whole thing has, it starts to develop a kind of a robust architecture um, 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 of its own. The landing into the bottom cinema and then just before you go into the bottom cinema, there's a shot of light over your head. Um, so that point there is that diagonal there. And we were just looking here and we were coming down the stairs here. So this is the bottom cinema. This stairs runs up and ends up at the front door of the old house. Past windows. So here, here it is here, and there's the archway, and here's the building behind it. So this is a cross section through the archway where uh, planning, pla planning requested, because it effectively it's a, it's a, it, the building belongs to the city and the city wanted to keep the facade, although the, it was a tall order, frankly, to try and place a building of this size in the, in the, on the footprint of the, what well, it was a merchant, a, a Georgian merchant's house and, and its garden. All that left was left was, all that was really left was the facade, but it did make sense because it was linked, it was paired with the building next door through an archway and it does kind of hold the remaining fabric of Merchant's Road. So it felt kind of right to do it. And by doing that, it then put, an, put so much pressure on the program that actually, kind of um, 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 things, things happened like you couldn't really have a foyer but you could possibly have an outdoor space and so on. And it also meant then that the new architecture which starts back here can start to, re to expand and reflect. So by forcing perspective, say in that archway and opening that window, make a new kind of municipal order to the street and kind of elevate the facade um, further to make a basically a the landscape of steps i mean it's it's a, it's a building of of raked rooms the only flat rooms in it are the bar and the tea room the rest of it is all tracked so here you are here you have it's re reinstated the windows are pushed forward um that's a pat scott these are the all these limestone sections are put back in like dentistry in, in an in situ frame with, as facsimile um, and, then, and then the limestone is um, 
amplified, I think, to try and make a kind of more palazzo than, 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 than this townhouse was. And a sense of drama as you go in. You can see that stairs in the distance is up to the bar. And then we worked on making these gates. I suppose slightly the image of, of the tower house, that, that idea of a kind of a castle and, a, and an idea of things being slightly bigger than they possibly need to be and a certain kind of development of, of a chamfer and a chevron and a sort of sense of, a, sense of, sense of lancets and so on was something that kind of developed as a, as a language across the building. And then this is the box office um, here. This window is from the bar, so you can wait for your, see who's buying tickets. Maybe your date hasn't shown up yet. And this is one door in, so the thing becomes, and then you can also go up the stairs, and you can also go up the back stairs here. So things are completely kind of porous. So really, we're trying to make it a piece of town. And this is just a shop. It's a corner shop. It's, and it has a jolly facade that slides back and forth. And then the section as a drawing becomes the wayfinding. And then the space between the main building, the cinema, and the, the gatehouse, this is the box office here. You can see this kind of shifting that goes on then on, on the skin, um, becomes uh, a crack in the fabric. The, this is the only window which is clear, which looks back down to the river Corrib, which threatens to flood the building. So you get this space here, which I suppose is trying to, it's picturesque, it's trying to make those kind of spaces that um, I think we all marvel at in old towns. And here is a, this is a cast-in vote of, of a, a woman standing on a, on a moon with her head surrounded by stars, um, which is from the Book of Revelations, which is an, a kind of appropriate image for cinema. And you view it through this window here, which is the red one you saw previously. And there it is again. There's that window. There it is again. And there it is from inside. And there she is through the gels, through the resin gels of the glazing. And that, that's based on a... The research for this was done for the Venice Biennale in 2008, where I kind of thought, oh, well, if it's a cinema, how do you do a cinema? Or how do you do a window in a cinema if a cinema is a window? And could we make a black box or should we make a black box with has eyes? So it started to became, become this thing about academy ratio and that old proportion, which is very beautiful, um, and how and about the kind of forced intimacy that there is in going to the pictures where you go into a darkened room with a bunch of strangers and something happens on screen and then you all leave again and that kind of curiosity is a voyeurism of the public act of going to the pictures. So we made this little kind of model of, this, of, this, of the cinema which has an academy ratio door which is lined in speakers and a window. So the person here is watching a movie of a lady watching a movie but there's a person here by virtue of a mirror can watch this person watching this. And inside it gets like this. So it's, a, it's like those um, fairground things, you know, where the lady is sawn in half or something. It's just a, an entertainment. But in a way, it is, I think, a model over the... beyond the pragmatics, although it does have a projection room of the pleasure of cinema. So the window, then, is a mechanism, a device, kind of a way of seeing, and as a way of lighting, and and the way that the in you know in the way that they gel scenes, they gel lights to make scenes in movies. I thought we should gel the windows, so the window then becomes overscaled. Academy ratio. Casement. 
and then the glass becomes drawn on with mass with um, clear resin and then painted. All and so in these like these um very um, zingy colours and then they're put in the frames. There's Eric Pierce who actually made all of these. You can see him in the background there. I like that. And then they and then of course they when you look through them you um to a wet day in Galway, it becomes slightly different. And you can see how the colour floods these small dams of clear resin. And then how the colour floods the space. And goes on the floor. And just speak. And they, so they, they look, it's really strange. They kind of feel like they're electronic. And because they have the same proportion, really, as a television set, but yet they're wooden frame, they do, in, in a concrete wall, they have this very um, um, delightful kind of sweet um, 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 effect. And, and so they, they're arranged, there's 23 of them, they're arranged across the facade. This is the unfolded elevation. So you can see them all here. And then these are the vents at the back for the machine that is the cinema. Of course, that's the other thing about cinemas. They have, they are a big piece of kit. Um, and so they make, you know, this happen. So th this is the building as it stands. And a remade gable on an old facade. Uh, Polos becomes the ventilation for the cinema below. Polos is the Gaelic for palace. Well, no, that wouldn't, that's not right. They both mean the same thing. I think it's probably a better way of putting it. And because it's a bilingual town, you have Polos on the back here, and the two diacritics are in green neon, and here they become slots for the back stairs. And the sea of palace here is a little taught on, I don't know, maybe Vertov or somebody like that, I am Kino I, I am Cinema, that you can see off that half landing through the sea of the cinema. Being behind the sign, which is kind of one of those great cinematic images. And so you can see it, it opens up then as a picture box or advent calendar um, back into the town in the evening, or as a gallery of the last pictures that Pat Scott made. They're the two diacritics at the end. So Paul lost Paul, the father makes, it's called a father. It means the long, it makes a long sound. So when the, so now the building's branding, it has become Paul loss. But I mean, the, the, this is a vestige of, again, that kind of decorated shed, frugal glamour. I, I really thought it was, I mean, it's, it's kind of humbling to see the Arc de Triomphe, or not the, the, the um, <laughs> the uh, the Eiffel Tower do that thing it does on the turn of the hour. It's not quite the same, but in a small town on the west coast of Ireland, that's a big sign, um, um, and and has a big impact about making a gateway into the town. This is the main road in, and and trying to lure people back out to this edge of town between the old town and the docks. So that's that. The, that op that window opens there. That's that um, chimney I was talking to you about. Then these are all the blue windows of that staircase. And these are all the red windows of that one. And that's the bar, all in yellow. And then the space between the approach. So there was a lot of, it was enjoyable to, I mean, invent. I, 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 there's a night, I'm, I'm sure it's everywhere. There's a lovely thing about slightly bastardized fonts and um, kind of handmade, like wrong fonts that have a kind of a bias towards the classical. They're, they're, they, they would be serif, but they but it's too tricky <laughs> so and so it was fun to try and work out a font here and like even to the point of the cl of the classic mistake of having the s you know no graphic designer the s is too small 
which you can see, you see in perspective there, the S kind of collapses, so the whole thing looms out a little bit. Um, and then, as you saw earlier in the pictures, just the enjoyment of the conduit and how it kind of makes a tree and just feeds the back of the, of the magic on the front. And then you get this very direct application of the father or the, the diacritic in neon, green neon, just clipped and hanging in a vitrine with the mirrored edges. And so then, this is, so this, so here you see it kind of inveigling its way into the shot, like somebody creeping into your photograph. It's trying to be seen from down the town. The, and then this is just the detail of how it very directly, this is a single line of cerise neon get, gets into the in situ letters. There's that window C, and then what it, you know, it's just, I like looking at, I like looking at. It's, it, 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 I, the thought is that the, de, that the applied arts maybe are now signage. And so, and if it's in, if it's in, a, if it's a kind of an arts and if it's in, if it's within an arts and crafts tradition, then neon, um, qualifies as does the running man as does the as do the markings the foot markings as does you know all of the things that is effectively an architecture of letters which is the architecture of certainly the old architecture of cinema and so therefore the section can become the wayfinding and the unfolded elevation can become the wayfinding and a window and the ventilation can become a sign, and an S can become, you know, it's hard to do an S in, in right through the, right through the structure of of of, of a 300, 250 mil wall, and then it's reflections, and so this facade is then book faced out to try and again catch as much of that south light as as it can possibly manage. And fit into the town. So here you see the, you know, okay, this is this is the project, but this it belongs to this house next door, and then this, and then this, and then this. So it makes sense. I'm not sure it should be white, really, but you know, over time that will change, I'm sure. But it's about maintaining the streetscape and avoiding, uh, in a way, of stepping aside from the corner, and allowing this thing to happen here, which allows a bigger volume. Um, and then I, there's a tradition of. Gable signage, um, which I really enjoy. That's what it was like before. So you can get the sense of the facade kept and cut here and eroded, and then the, the volume. This is the resultant of a. This is X marks that archway. There was a, a road cut through here in the 1980s, but this is the docks. And then this is the clada, and this is the corrib. So you can see it's a very exposed condition here. And in planning terms, it's about, it's about pulling the town to connect, to try and connect across here. So here you can see it as a site found. There's the archway again. There's that new road. There's Merchant's Arch. Here you can, that's, that, that's the situation as it, were, as it was. So this is a very turbulent river, very, very fast. And this is quite a busy dock. And then this is the project. So you can see the diagram of cauterize this junction here and big object here with a pyramid roof oriented north. So the, the entire site was dug out, was quarried unexpectedly. Um, this was a publicity shot, but that's the situation actually. If you sit in the in the in the um, bottom cinema today, I like this photograph. It's the transfer slab at, at at plinth level, but you can see the order of the walls which hold the building up, and you can see that how few there are of them. Structurally, it's quite a neat piece of work. 
it does a, it does a, it do, it it does it it couldn't be the building couldn't be depropped until it was entirely finished because it was con completely reliant on itself like its cranial to for its structural in integrity it's made by made by a team of six six carpenters built the, all the formwork for the for the building um there's this it's kind of level of of rebar required to transfer the, the load of the building down this wall across here and back down here making situations like this this is it under construction you can see the facade of the old building there you can see front staircase back staircase lift and then further on up, there's that triangular chimney, the back stairs here, and the body of the cinema is coming in here. So the order of a reasonable, reasonable orthogonal room here, within then the, the paroxysms of the old Georgian plot, and then a pyramid on top, oriented north with a north light. Again, this language of the galvanized um, metal. Uh, louvers like the railings like the gates slightly um slightly um exaggerated to make pictures like this like this kind of keep there was a there was a discussion in the in the city about the imagery of the building how do and 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 a lot, a lot of a lot of it revolved around ideas of fragments and castles and um, um, that and the, the, the image of the, the the idea that Galway has of itself and how does it contribute to that? You can see here it even has a little uh, a little trim on the top where the roof slides over. So as it comes back, then it starts to sit into the town as a public building, maybe, if you like, as a as an electric church or something. And back again, it sits in. It has got a weather vane on it. And again, trying to just cooperate, and be landmark and fabric, depending on point of view. And then back again from the cladder. And there it is in the distance. And the roof light is the silhouette of the client with a, well, it's a cone for an eye. It's a woman chasing her own profile and looking for north. Thank you.